Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be talking about how you can extract aluminium using ideas about electrolysis. Now this is one of a sequence of videos I've done about electrolysis, the basic principles behind it, how you can actually apply it to real life situations. Um, so I'm going to presume that you have probably watched my electrolysis basic principles video and just get straight into the detail about how you can use it to extract aluminium. Now aluminium is the most commonly found metal on earth and it is expensive. The reason why it's expensive is mainly because the amount of electricity that is used up extracting it from its ore. Now let's just explain what an ore is. An ore is a mineral containing large quantities of metal. So we've got a big mineral containing large quantities of metal and we have to try and extract that out and that's why aluminium is quite expensive. The aluminium ore itself is called bauxite. So we'll just make a little note of that there. So the ore is called B A U X I T E bauxite and it comes from that. So the ore is called bauxite and we're going to extract some aluminium from that. Now, initially the bauxite is purified to yield a white powder, what's called aluminium oxide. And it's from aluminium oxide from which aluminium can actually be extracted. And the extraction is done by electrolysis. So lysis means split, electro from electricity. So we're going to use electricity to split aluminium oxide and get aluminium that we want, pure aluminium. Now, first of all, the aluminium oxide must be melted. So we'll just put a few, make a few notes there. So, first thing to do is purify to get aluminium oxide. So I'll just write this down in case you make notes. Then the second thing we're going to do is use electrolysis. to get pure aluminium. Sorry, my writing hasn't got any detail, even though I've done loads of these videos now. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, first of all, the aluminium oxide must be melted so that electricity can pass through it. So we need to get it molten. Aluminium oxide has a very high melting point. It's, about, it's just over 2000 degrees Celsius. So it is very expensive to actually melt it. So instead, what I'm going to do is dissolve it in something called molten cryolite. It's an aluminium compound with a lower melting point than aluminium oxide. And the use of cryolite actually reduces some of the energy costs involved in extracting aluminium. So let's draw up what we've, what we've got, essentially. Let's imagine we have this uh, big tub here. Again, not, not the best picture. But what we're going to have... Here, just round the outside is this kind of casing to this set of apparatus. Now this is a steel case. So we've got a steel case around the outside. Then what we have would be a graphite cathode and a graphite anode. Now the cathode, you might remember from a previous video, is the negative electrode, metal electrode. So what we're going to do is put in place here, I'll just put a minus sign on it to remember that is there, the cathode, and we've got a little bit there. Now you'll notice I've left a bit of a gap on the right hand side, I'll explain that in one moment. So that is there, a graphite cathode. And what we have, and I'll draw this in green just to make it different, are graphite anodes. Put a positive there, put a positive one there. Looks a bit like that. And these are our anode positive terminals made again of graphite. I'll just write that in so we've got the detail there. Now if you remember graphite is made from carbon, pure carbon. So you've got a carbon-based cathode and carbon-based anode. 
and in this kind of set of apparatus in this big mixture of uh, equipment that we've got we're going to put in some fluid now it do, the only reason I'm putting the dots in is just to distinguish it from the rest of the actual uh, pieces of equipment we've got now the region that I've put dots in that represents our purified aluminium ore dissolved in molten cryolite so we've got our molten cryolite and in that is our purified aluminium ore or our aluminium oxide. Remember that's our purified version. So we've got aluminium oxide dissolved in molten cryolite. Now, one of the questions that an examiner may uh, give you based on this particular piece of equipment is using the picture and your own knowledge of electrolysis. Can you try and explain what is happening in this example? Could you perhaps include a description of how pure aluminium can be tapped off at the bottom and suggest why the positive electrode would need replacing frequently? And if you can, include a half equation for reactions taking place at both of the electrodes. So we're going to do all of that. We're going to look at all four elements of this. So we're going to shrink the screen a little bit. And just move this up. Let's first of all just explain what is happening. So we have aluminium oxide. That's the, within the molten cryolite. And we're going to use electrolysis. We're going to pass electricity through this solution. And we're going to break that down. We're going to get separate aluminium and we're going to get oxygen, quite clearly. Now, the aluminium, if we think of the aluminium ions, the Al, and we said aluminium has a three plus charge in it. Those aluminium ions that come from that aluminium oxide, remember, aluminium oxide is an ionic substance. When we break it down, into simpler forms, you get it into separate ions. That Al3+, because it's got a positive charge, will move towards the negative electrode. So it will move towards the cathode. So those Al3 plus ions will start to move towards the negative cathode. Now there at the negative cathode, they will actually pick up Electrons, they receive electrons, they become reduced. And when they become reduced, they become uh, aluminium atoms. So those Al3 plus ions will pick up three lots of electrons, three E minus, and you will get simply Al, just pure aluminium. Now that pure aluminium can be tapped off at the bottom. Now that's why I left, if I just go back to it, and I'll circle it in red to make it a bit clearer, this sort of gap there in the cathode because what you can actually do is tap it off at that point there you can extract the aluminium out at that point there so all that pure aluminium will fall to the bottom and then you can extract it out on the right hand side and here we have the half equation to represent the reaction going on at the negative terminal the negative electrode Al3 plus ions pick up 3 E minus 3 lots of electrons they become reduced and we get pure aluminium. And there we go, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to extract aluminium from its ore. Now, one of the other questions that uh, I asked initially was, why would the positive electrode need replacing frequently? Well, if we remember that the positive electrode is made of graphite, which is pure carbon. When we split the aluminium oxide, we're going to have oxygen ions within this solution so that there so we've mentioned about the aluminium we're going to have O2 minus ions circulating within the bottom of this tank if we call it a tank within this steel case let's say now because that has a negative charge O2 minus that is going to go and attract to the positive terminal here so if I just draw a few blue arrows in the, the original picture so remember 
opposite charges attract. So we've got an O2 minus oxygen ions with a negative charge go to the positive terminal. And there, they will lose electrons. So that O2 minus, it's got an extra sort of two negative charges. They will lose two lots of E minus, because remember, E minus represents an electron, and two E minus, because we need to balance this equation. And there we will form O2. Now at this point, it looks like the half equation is complete, but it's not. We need to balance it further, because we're forming O2, because the oxygen atom travels with a pair, it travels as a molecule. So we now need to balance this up because we've got two lots of oxygens on the right and only one on the left. So we're going to need two lots of O2 minus to begin with there if we're going to balance it. Now it looks a little bit unclear. So in total, now on the left hand side, we're going to have, just on this bit here, a total negative charge of 4 minus. So you can see we're going to have to change now the charge that we have on this electron. So we're going to need to take away the two and to fully balance that out now we need to change that to a four because we're going to need four E minus. And then we have then a balanced half equation. So two O2 minus to give a total uh, negative charge of four and we're going to minus off that four negative charges to get a stable O2. And that's an O2 gas. So let's go back to why I said you need to replace the anode. If we're forming O2 gas, we know that we've got a graphite, a pure carbon anode. We've got oxygen forming. Now that oxygen will react with the actual substance of the anode, that carbon, to form CO2. The carbon will react with the oxygen to form CO2, carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide will escape. So physically, the actual nature of the anode will um, decrease in size. The carbon will react with the oxygen that we're making at that anode, form carbon dioxide, and that will escape. So just to recap, we've got the ore called bauxite. We're going to purify that to get aluminium oxide and use electrolysis to get the pure aluminium. We'll dissolve that in molten cryolite to reduce energy, cost, reduce the energy costs. Then when we split this ionic substance up. The Al3 plus ions will go to the negative cathode, gain electrons, become reduced, and become pure aluminium, which is dense, so we'll collect at the bottom of this steel case, which we can tap off. And the O2 minus ions will go and lose electrons at the positive anode to become oxygen gas, which will react with the carbon of that anode, producing CO2, which too will escape. That's a little bit of information there about how we can use electrolysis to extract aluminium. Okay, hope all that helps.